Today we're going to be talking about Libertango, the real Libertango. Whoa! <laughs> Roll that back. Roll that back. <laughs> With that slow motion Jabberwockies. Yeah. I linked a video of me, high school ju- High school jun- Really? You, you play this when you're a high school junior? What? And then he just- He just brings it back in. That is- This guy's in high school, once again. <laughs> I love that flair that he has with his strokes. That's so good, man. That's so good. <laughs> oh, it's really nice to hear good Roomba playing. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. And it's time for Student vs. Professional. Let's watch. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Marimba Maurice, Bradley Crowley, Ryan Carlos, Sanction Hans, Scott Raider, Greg Harris, and Dean P. Newberger. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is John Donovan. Thank you so much for your continued support. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. Hope you've been well, hope you've been staying safe. And yes, today we're going to be talking about Libertango, the real Libertango. But before we do that, if you're new to my channel, my name is Adam and I make content about percussion every single week on this channel. If you haven't already, hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads as I upload every single week. Okay, back to today's video. So in the past, we have talked about Libertango on this channel. If you don't know Libertango, it's a very famous Astor Piazzolla tango theme, which sounds like this. It's just epic and there are just so many percussion versions of this including of course the very famous Eric Samu version of Libertango which we covered in the last Student vs Professional which also got the attention of Gary Burton <laughs> that's why we had the Gary Burton interview and yes this version you guys know how I feel about this version it's not really Libertango and also I'm still salty about the fact that this cover heavily implies that Eric Samu wrote Libertango when it was actually Astor Piazzolla. Come on man. <laughs> but we're not going to be talking about that version of Libertango because we actually have another version of Libertango which I personally feel like is much more like the original style with that grittiness of tango on the streets and really cool solo runs here and there and it doesn't sound like a marimba piece. I'm talking about Fumito Ninoyo's version of Libertango. This version of Libertango is all class. It is so full of liveliness and flavor and there's just so many elements of tango mixed with all these little interspersed, almost jazzy lines of improvisation that I just absolutely love. It just feels more like a group thing. I mean, isn't tango supposed to be a group thing? In my opinion, it definitely feels a lot less mechanical than the Samu one, which is why I'm so happy to see this submission from Gabriel Di Ola Guibel. And he's submitting Libertango arranged by Fumito Ninoya. Hey Adam, I just saw your video comparing the two different Libertangos, student versus professional. If you haven't seen that, it's over here. Well, here's the same thing, but for the Fumito Ninoya version. As you said in your video, this arrangement is closer to the original. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you for agreeing with me. <laughs> I linked a video of me, high school ju- High school junior? Really? You, you play this when you're a high school junior? What? Playing the solo for my school's online solo contest and the video of Fumito, the man himself, shredding away at this piece. I look forward to hearing back from you. Well, you're hearing back from me now, Gabriel, and once again, you're playing this in high school? Man, that's insane. Like last week's video, if you haven't checked it out, it's over here. We watched an audition from a 16-year-old named Markel, and he played some awesome pieces that I've only ever seen people attempt at the age of 21, 22. Things like Asventuras and Odessa, like very difficult pieces, and he did it for a college audition. And here we have high school junior playing Fumito Ninoi's version of Libertango. What is this world coming to? <laughs> but I'm sure Gabriel is going to do a great job, otherwise he wouldn't have submitted this to the segment. And speaking of submitting, if you want to submit anything to this segment at any time, any percussion video, you can head over to adamcampercussion.com forward slash submit. All right, let's watch. Okay, so I don't actually have the score of this particular one. I don't know where it's gone. I thought I had it. You can get the score from Editions Fitzer. Shout out to the plug. But yes, I'm basically going to go through this piece in segments and we're going to compare the student version from Gabrielle to the professional version from Fumito Nunoya. Let's watch Gabrielle's introduction first. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, okay, sorry, I should have mentioned this actually. He is playing with a pre-recorded piano accompaniment from his friend. But yeah, that should explain why it might sound a little bit off at times because he is playing with a pre-recorded track. It is very hard when you can't adjust tempos on the fly. So totally understand that. Okay, so let's start again. It's great accenting. Yeah, he's found the tempo now. Oh, look at that one-handed roll. Respect. Okay, so that was actually really good. Like, he sounded like he was really in control. Uh, he sounds like he knows the notes very well, but he did sound like he was rushing a little bit at the start. And again, I think it's the piano track that's making him do that. Generally speaking, like what Gary Burden said in my interview over here, Libertango can be a range of different tempos. So it's not uncommon for Libertango to change speed here and there. That's more of a technicality. His actual playing sounds really good so far. The tone sounds really good. He's putting a little bit of articulation into the phrasing. I really like it. Okay, let's see how the master does this phrase in comparison. And already I'm looking at Fermito's technique. I've seen this video before countless times. And the fact that he moves his strokes so little but gets so much sound is incredible. Watch this. Look how low key he is. And see how clear it is? I mean, it's the mics too, but... Very small heights. Oh yeah, very small heights. Yeah, look at that one-handed roll. It's like so tiny. And that traditional grip. This is awesome. Very, very precise articulation. It's those mallets, like I think they have a core that comes in a little bit more when you push, push harder. What's that called again? <laughs> I should know this. Multi-tonal. I think possibly multi-tonal mallets. So far, I think they're both doing a good job. I don't think it really matters that Gabriel is going a little bit slower. I think everyone can have a slightly different interpretation of the tempo at this early stage. Oh, this solo. Look at that accuracy. Almost no wrong notes. All the accents are so precise. He's not rushing this at all. He's not rushing it at all. Oh, man. You know when people really know what they're playing or they really believe in what they're playing, it's so obvious, right? You can see that Gabriel has spent a lot of time preparing this. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to keep those runs so steady. Like he didn't rush at all. At the beginning, he rushed a little bit, but here it was just rock solid. And all the accents were there. It sounded really nice. It didn't sound harsh. He wasn't overly banging anything. It just sounds really like Doo -doo 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 -doo. And I think that is just awesome. <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, firstly, sounds incredible, but did anybody pick out what happened at the beginning of that solo? I play it again. So, right there, the piano has been adjusting to Fumito's tempo. Fumito decided to play very ahead of the beat at the beginning of the solo. The da -da 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 he really like powered through that and the pianist was like oh! <laughs> and then decided to catch up to him. So he is rushing a little bit but again like I said earlier with Libertango it can be flexible tempo sometimes and this is very reflective of the style of Libertango I think that sort of impulsiveness and excitement. Oh that's that's awesome. Anyway let's keep watching for now. See how small he made those runs? Whoa! <laughs> Roll that back. Roll that back. He has really nice dynamic contrast. It's very obvious in his stroke height. And yeah, the mallets he's using, which I believe are Kurogi prototype mallets, that's what he said in the comments. Uh, just he's making really good use of that dotty sound, but not making it overly harsh. Even when you hit those bass notes, it sounded really bouncy and light. Man, that's, that's pro level playing. And he's so low key. Well, watch this again. See, he's not moving much. And these like little runs. 
and then it brings it up, back it in. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. <laughs> With that slow motion jabber walkies. Yeah. I think there's an academic term for this. What's it called? Performativity, something like that, where he's adding extra elements of drama in even his physical movements. Like he wasn't even playing when he did that upstroke and then that slow walk off, but it just adds so much. Again, two very different versions. I think Gabriel's version is more calm. He's definitely trying to be more steady and he's not being too careful though. He's still trying to take some chances with the dynamics and stuff. So it sounds really, really good. And then Firmino's version is more explosive and powerful. And you can see he's like bringing it in and out. And he even rushed a little bit at the start because of the excitement. Here's the next part. Now, this part is just piano. Um, and I don't think Gabriel does anything in this section, as you can see. <laughs> Um, but you'll see later on, Fumito does some extra improvised sections in this section. But I thought I would just leave this in here, just so you guys can see that Gabriel doesn't have to do anything. Okay, so here's Fumito's version. Ah, oh, yeah, you hit that. <laughs> just the way he whips up that upstroke is just so creative. Uh, I personally wouldn't do any improvised runs like this. I think it's a bit weird, but... Somehow he manages to pull it off. Like, <laughs> can't explain it. It's just that alternation between light and then he gets, he does like resonator taps. Very stupidic. That's all it is. Like he just does a couple of light taps here and there. I'm glad he didn't go overboard with it. I'm glad he didn't just start going because that's not what it's meant to be. Again, I think he's just adding some of that explosive drama of those sudden hits that we don't expect. Uh, it's really cool touch. Again, I, I couldn't pull it off. I'm not as cool as Fumito. <laughs> okay, so you can see Gabriel's deliberately delaying the beat. Yeah, he's deliberately delaying, which I think is really cool. It's like that sort of heavy touch. Yeah. Ah, oh, the piano made a mistake. Whoa. And he just lands it back onto the beat. See, it's back into the pocket again. With the parallel octaves. The piano part sounds interesting, but man, Gabriel, wow! Look at those octaves! So what I would call that sort of playing is very organic. It sounds very natural because it's not mechanically adjusted to the beat. It's not super quantized sounding. It just sounds really free. Now, I know what he's trying to do with that sort of late bit. Where was it? I really like what he did here with that delayed beat feel. It just makes it so much more interesting. Like you're at some late night bar in Latin America and you're like, all right, pour me another drink or something. <laughs> and then he just, he just brings it back in. That is, this guy's in high school, once again. <laughs> He's thinking well beyond his age. I really, really respect that. Yeah. And yeah, so even there, he delayed the beat too. accents and articulation is just brilliant. It's just enjoyable. Let's watch Firmino's version. Firmino's version, I'm fairly sure he doesn't do that delay thing, but he does something else that I didn't expect. Man, just the way he plays. So he, he's, he's doing a lazy feel too, but it's different. Yeah, it's only the second part of each phrase that he does lazy. Oh man, the way he just glides in like that. And he's altering the roll speed. Something I've been telling you guys to do for ages. <laughs> oh yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that, that sliding roll. And here the pianist is much more in time. Oh. Just the way he altered the roll speed at that last section is so clever. Here it is. 
Look at this. He speeds it up through the glitz, so then it sounds more like a, a legato glitz. It's just brilliant articulation, really like thinking outside the box, using roll speed to dictate legato versus staccato. Man, that's... That's top tier playing. Again, I can't really say one version is better than the other because they're so different. Like Gabriel's version, he was really embodying that slow and lazy feel. And then he suddenly brought it back in in time. And he also played with the roll speed. And yeah, just very advanced playing for a high school student or even if he wasn't a high school student. Awesome, seriously, this piece, if you have a friend who plays piano or you just want to do something different, this is really a great arrangement. Okay, let's look at the next bit. I believe the next part is a more straightforward section where the marimba accompanies the piano. It's really nice and light here. Yep. I love that flair that he has with his strokes. That's so good, man. That's so good. <laughs> Oh, isn't it nice to hear good marimba playing? The amount of maturity when you have those kinds of upstrokes, they don't feel artificial or forced, they just, they just feel right. It's just like a dance move, like the oh, like a lot of pomp, a lot of theater, but not too much, just a little bit here and there. And it makes you want to keep watching and it makes you want to be like, I want to listen to this guy play it for hours and hours because it's just, you don't know what's coming next. And I think Fumito is going to do the same thing. Now, I think Fumito's, yeah, Fumito's sound during the accompaniment parts sound more like accompaniment. Whereas I think Gabriel's one, maybe it's a little bit too loud and a little bit too hard, especially the non-bass notes. Because you can see Fumito's going dong, 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 dong. Whereas Gabriel's going like do, 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 do. It's supposed to be dong, 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 dong. So yeah, I think this approach is a little bit better, but otherwise it's still good. Now that bass end sounds awesome. And those melons doing a great job of softening the blow. <laughs> that dynamic contrast though. What did he just do there? Hold on, what did he just do there? Okay, this is this forte piano thing is just epic. Epic. He does this thing with his left hand. <laughs> like what? What? Oh, just so much style. So much style. This part's hard. You gotta monitor the octave while doing the left hand. He's getting all of them accurate. Pretty much. Pretty much all accurate. Look at that. So good. Yeah. Gabriel, man, like seriously, really, really good effort. That is so accurate for something that I like to call it blind shotting. You know, when you have to hit the octave while your left hand is doing something like several octaves below and you can only look at one of them, right? So either you look at the bass end or the octave end. And he was looking at the left hand but still nailing those octaves. That is like blind shotting to the max. <laughs> I've talked about this thing on previous Technique Talk episodes called feeling the bars where basically when you've played marimba long enough you can feel where the notes are even though you're not directly touching it you can just feel it through the mouth and I think Gabriel has achieved that level of competency. Man that is really good. All right let's listen to Fumito's version which I'm sure is going to be like twice as fast or something. <laughs> yep it is. <laughs> Perfect octaves. Perfect octaves. With, with accents too. Oh, look at that. Look at that.
perfect octaves, man. That's something I have been dreaming of being able to do, is just playing perfect octaves. And yeah, again, his style of playing above the marimba and keeping it very small and low-key, minimal wrist movements, using the rattan to his advantage. Okay, let's keep watching. Man, this is one of the best videos I've seen on this segment by far. See, he's altering the roll speed. This, this is like how you do like choral sections. Could have joined that a little bit better, but it's still good. Right, see how Firmino is rolling faster, but tilting the mallets? And he's using the edges of the mallet so that he can roll faster without it sounding harsh. That switch to individual notes. Yeah, I think Gabriel could roll a little bit faster. As you can see, he's rolling quite slowly and he's not tilting mallets. If he tilts the mallets more, if he does this, he's gonna get much cleaner, much less core sound and it's gonna be able to roll without having to worry about being too harsh. Yeah, Fumido is really filling the, the room with sound, using the resonators to help him carry the sustain by rolling faster. He's so relaxed. Look how relaxed his shoulders and arms are. Just he's just moving his wrist, just wiggling. Key change. This part is very hard. Oh, oh, that was almost perfect. What is the pianist doing? <laughs> I don't think the rhythm part was his fault. I think it's the pianist who's kind of not keeping the beat uh, going. It's kind of... This run is really good. Very confident. What, what happened to the piano? <laughs> let's, let's watch Fumito's version. Did he adjust his beat or something? Maybe not, I think it's just the accents on the piano part. Oh, okay, you see the pianist is watching him like a hawk, following all his inflections. Ah, oh. yes. Whoa! <laughs> Oh man, let's, we gotta watch that again, that's awesome. I love that. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then yeah, Gabriel with the octaves, man. Look at his octaves. Okay, before we watch Gabriel's thing, I should mention that I think both versions of that solo section were pretty good, once again. Uh, I do believe that Fumito's version is just more clear in general because he seems to be, I don't know, maybe it's his stroke, the way he does his stroke is just a lot lighter and it just sounds a lot more effortless. And I think that just comes with experience, you know, when playing the same passage many times. And Gabriel's stroke is a little bit more tall and it looks like he's having to work a little bit harder. Okay, before we watch the closing section of this, if you guys are enjoying the video as much as I am, please give me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. And once again, the full performances that are featured in this episode are in the description down below. All right, let's finish this off. This is so good. See how Gabriel's switching his view? He keeps looking left and right and all the notes are perfect. A little bit of wrong notes here. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. I'm gonna watch that again, and this time I'm gonna say a few things about what I noticed. Same thing here. As you can see, his octaves actually look really good in this section. Really light, really nice. This part, he looks a lot stiffer. You can see that his shoulders start to stiffen up 
and his arms are starting to stiffen up because I think he's focusing too much on playing down with this. I think it's the two middle mallets that are doing the dun 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 dun. Uh, I think if he just lightens it up and does more of a lateral, it will feel a lot nicer uh, because it looks like he's really trying to push this melody through and he doesn't have to because the piano is playing it as well actually and yes the pianist is technically an accompanist but this is more of a duet than a marimba and piano thing. So he's really going for it. This part's really good though. I really like that he went dum 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 really put some weight. That part, yes, okay, that part I agree you can put more weight and he did a perfect job of that. But yeah, I don't think he needs to go that hard on those independent strokes. Awesome job, man. Awesome job. That is so good. But before I say anything else, let's watch Fumito's version as well. Ready for this? You guys ready for this? Let me stop there before he finishes. So I think maybe Gabriel is missing one note because it's maybe like optional or something. I don't have the score with me, but if someone can let me know down in the comments below. But here I can see Fumito is playing three notes. He's playing the octave in the right hand and a single note in the left hand. And he looks so relaxed hitting these notes. The stroke height isn't that high, but he's getting a really nice sound. Not a blast beat like in your face sort of sound, but it's like strong but not overwhelming. Like listen to this again. He's using his wrist to push it forward. And I think his left hand is actually doing laterals, right? Yeah, he uses his left mallet, his bass mallet sometimes. So usually with four mallet grips, I think the outside mallets have more grip on them because you curl your fingers, well in Stevens anyway, you curl your fingers around the outside mallet and your third finger as well. Whereas the inside mallet only has two and it's kind of like a little bit of stick is inside your hand. What he's done here by using the bottom mallet as the left hand mallet instead of the inside bottom mallet, he's using the bottom outside mallet, the base mallet, he's able to get a lot more power without trying so hard. So maybe if Gabriel changed his sticking so that he used the one mallet to do all of those left hand runs, it might be a little bit easier and it might get more sound. Especially if you have this nice sort of boomy bass mallet that he has. It has like a sort of splat effect, almost like, doom, doom. like it really brings out that fundamental tone. That was a really bad impersonation of a mallet. <laughs> I really think that would make this run a lot easier. But okay, I'm not gonna talk anymore. We're just gonna watch him finish the piece. Gliss. The way he does that gliss is so insane. Oh, I've never seen anyone finish a gliss like that. I mean, I've watched this video before, but like that swish, so, so, like that's such a unique way of doing it, going up and down with one hand in an S shape. That is so clever. Let's watch it again. That's... Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of both performances. And if you want to see the full performances, they're in the description below. I actually think these might be the closest student versus professional that we've ever seen on this segment. Like normally I have a lot to say about the student version and maybe less to say about the professional version. I had very little to say about the student version. Gabrielle just prepared it so well. And if I had to give him a numerical rating, I would give him easily nine out of 10. No problem. The technical execution, all the accuracy was just really, really good. Yeah, there were a couple of wrong notes here and there, but they didn't spoil the experience for me at all. And his tone is very mature. He's not just bashing the notes as hard as possible. He's really being careful to be light. Not as light as for me though, but he's on the right track. And things like, you know, the blind shots, being able to blindly hit all those octaves, no problem. Not rushing, 
but also having a little bit of fun with where the beat sits in the bar, like that late section, the really lazy, heavy section. Really advanced thinking from Gabriel and really top tier marimba performance. I have no doubt that if Gabriel is still going to do marimba in his older years, he is going to be amazing. And as for Fumito, well, I don't normally give tens on this segment, even to the professionals, but you know what? Given that he arranged this and it sounds not only like very much like the original's character and flair, but he just makes it so theatrical and you just want to keep watching and keep listening. And it doesn't sound harsh. It doesn't sound like he's trying too hard. All of the things like the S gliss and even tapping the side of the marimba, like none of those things felt overplayed. This video was filmed in 2014 and I don't remember anyone around that time doing this kind of stuff. Just a lot of attention to small details while still paying homage to the original. So for the first time ever, I'm going to be giving for me to on this segment, a 10 out of 10. Wow. Once again, if you ever want to submit anything to this segment, it's at adintanpercussion.com forward slash submit. I'd love to see more submissions from you guys. I have a whole bunch of marching submissions. We'll get to that later. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.